So I was just thinking as you were, you were speaking. I thought of Oshodi, I thought of Costain, yes. I thought of Ikorodo Road. Um, Lagos is presently facing a menace of articulated trucks, um, trailers, tankers, that's why, right in the middle that of the That is why Apapa is one of the local governments that we want to work in. The entire road network in Apapa needs to be rebuilt and strengthened. This idea that we have these asphalt roads, you know, that are not reinforced properly, is not working. But don't you think that the parking of those trucks on the bridges is, 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 oh, I agree is with we weakening you. the bridge? I, I agree with you entirely. I have no doubts that you are absolutely correct. I have no arguments with, with your point. But we need to fix Apapa itself. And we need to make parking available for those trucks within the vicinity is of there, the is port. Is there space in Apapa to park trucks? Well, if not in Apapa, at least in Nigeria, me fellow too. There is space. We can find space. We can be a little more creative. We can be a little more deliberate about the way we work. We can find, surely within the Apapa, Ajira, me fellow to axis, I'm certain that we can find land of up to like 50 hectares. Where, t where tankers can park comfortably. Where we can create, without, without causing where we traffic. can build. This is not a matter of just, you know, clearing some land and putting the tankers there. Because of course, then you have issues with them sinking in sand and all that kind of stuff. So we need to actually deliberately go out there, build a park with solid reinforced concrete. If we're serious about trading, and Lagos is a trading state, if we're serious about trading, then we need to have the facilities in place to encourage trade. So we build a facility for about 6,000 trucks. And any truck on any queue within the Apapa axis, within the Apapa Ajira Mifelodo axis, is to use that park and nowhere else. If they are caught, once the park is built, if they are caught anywhere parking indiscriminately, they will be impounded. We will bring the full force of the power of government upon any infringing trucks once they have an alternative, mm. which we will provide. Th there's something I also want us to touch on because it's, it's very important for Lagosians to have decent infrastructure, which you have you, you, you've spoken about and which we will keep talking about. Now, look at the roads. The Lagos state governor will tell you that most of the roads that are so bad our federal government roads and the Lagos state government has no business fixing these roads. Uh, I think that's now, one of the silliest... How are you going to work with the federal government? Uh, to, I think to, that to, is to one of the silliest this. arguments I've ever heard in my life. Because the federal government or federal officials do not, you know, keep those roads exclusively for federal use. Am I making sense? Yeah, but if you're a governor who has limited resources, but you don't want to... The resources in Lagos State are not that limited. Okay. They're not. It's just a culture of waste that has been allowed to take root over the last 19 years that is making it look like Lagos does not have the resources to fix our roads. We do have the resources. I mean, come on, Ikorodu Road, what do we need to do? We just need to scrape off the existing asphalt, reinforce the base course, and relay a fresh layer of asphalt. That's all we need to do. That's not rebuilding the whole road. That's not what we're doing. Are, are you talking about the bridges too? Yes, same thing. The bridges are concrete anyway. You know, so we just scrape off the old asphalt and we relay. That's all. It doesn't take that long. In fact, that, that for some of the for large portions of the road, a lot of the work can be done virtually overnight. So why is it so difficult for, why has it been difficult for the APC to do this? Corruption. In 16 years. You are saying corruption. the APC is corrupt. It's one of the most corrupt entities I've ever seen in my life. I mean, the Lekki Express Raceway, as far as I'm concerned, that's just a gigantic heist. Massive heist of state resources. That's all it is. I mean, how do you explain? You, you, you bring a 
private, supposedly private company. And uh, somehow they win a concession that was, uh, that, that was never advertised. It was never put out to tender. Nobody was invited to come and bid. And then suddenly, from out of the blue, you announce that this company has won. Won what? What was the contest? Well, uh, wh who else bidded for it? Okay. And then, you also take 1,500 hectares of land belonging to Lagosians in the Ibejuleki axis around Lakwe, and you hand it to this company. Not stopping there. You then take $42 million of Lagos State money and call it a loan. You also hand it to this company. Who the hell are they? What's our interest in this company? What's so special about them? Prior to their winning of the concession, high tech was relatively unknown. They just came from nowhere. And suddenly they were more competent than all the construction companies that we know in Nigeria. And of course, for a road that was built in three years, they've been on it for the last 12 years, 2006 to 2018. They still haven't finished the expansion work, but the road was built in three years, 35 years ago. And they're doing it at such a huge cost. So at every step, there is corruption. The loan that they obtained from, you know, the syndicated loan I described earlier, the 1,500 hectares of land was used as collateral. So for a private company that's supposed to come and fund this and then, you know, use that to get the right to toll the road, what did they invest? What exactly did they invest in the road? Where, where is their money? Because it seems to me as if Lagosians are the ones funding the road and still paying. Do you know that their agreement, the concession agreement, which uh, I managed to see at some point, actually states that LCC more or less owns the entire Lekki Peninsula. It confers putative ownership of the Lekki Peninsula on LCC. Which makes it, makes it look like we're all slaves of LCC for another 30 years, like you said. Exactly, yes. We are slaves of the LCC. All they need to do is point at any property within the vicinity of the road, of the concession. That's the language used in the agreement. Any property they deem necessary for the smooth operation of the tolls of the concession they can point to report it to the ppp board and the ppp board must pass that information on to the governor who must acquire said property for lcc that's a handing over that's internal colonization I'm also aware of an ISPO, an irrevocable standing payment order, in favor of the concessionaire against the Federation account of Lagos State. I think something in the order of 500 million naira every month. Secret agreements made allegedly in the public interest, in the interest of, the, of a public that is not allowed to know what they've signed up to. Lagosians have to be free. Yeah, and that's what you offer. We need our freedom. There was a time when Lagosians were free. Even during military rule, we were relatively freer than we are today. Today, we live under the dictatorship of one man and one man only. He, appoint, he anoints governors and discards them like tissue paper when they are no longer doing his bidding. That has to stop. Okay, listening to you now, one would think that you're f joining this race, you do not have a godfather because you seem to have a problem with godfathers, which some will say is indispensable in the present political climate we run. Do you, have a, do you have a godfather? Let me, 
I have a lot of people that I respect in politics. I have a lot of people. I will always have respect, the deepest respect, for people like Chief Olusha Gomba Sonjo. I will always retain respect, like him or hate him, for people like General Ibrahim Badamasi Babangida, IBB. I will always have respect for General Theophilus Danjuma. I will always have respect for the leaders of Afeni Ferry and OPC. Are these your godfathers? Well, look, um, I, I'm not so sure that these people are godfathers. I see them as father figures, people that I can go to for advice, people that will see me making a mistake and call me to one side and say, Tunde, look, that direction you're going is not right. With our experience and our age, we know that if you take that step you want to take, these are the possible consequences. Don't do it. And after considering the advice, I find it to be sensible, then of course, you know, a wise man, uh, th there is wisdom in the multitude of counsel. That's what the Bible says. You know, so, yes, there are people that I respect. And they, over Nigeria, are, they, of, are they backing you in this race? Religious leaders. Well, um, that's hard to tell. That's hard to tell. <laughs> Sounds like a political answer. <laughs> well, you, you, you can't you can't actually know the mind of a man at the end of the day. You know, if, even if people give you their blessings, they may have you know other agendas. You can't rule that out. You know, um, I wouldn't want to put anybody on the spot by saying that yes, they're backing me in this race or whatever. But the truth is, at the end of the day, we're all their children, and uh, whoever becomes governor, it behoves on that person to decide to give them their due regard whilst in office, knowing that the office is temporary. You, you, you seem to have a problem with Bola Tinubu as a person. I have no problem with any individual, but I have problems with criminals. Are you saying he's a criminal? I never said anybody was a criminal. I said I have problems with criminals. <laughs> because we were talking about Bola Tinubu where you went. Where you said well, that. you were talking about Bola Tinubu, and I'm not talking about him. Oh, okay. Um, you, you kind of detest his politics, right? Don't you? I don't like politics of oppression. I don't like politics that is rooted in corruption. I don't like politics of extraction. I don't like politics of exploitation. I don't like it. And his, all, his politics is all of those things. Whoever is, you know, practicing politics of exploitation is my enemy. That's the way I see the world. If you are an exploiter, if you are a killer of people, then you are my enemy. I can never be friends with people like that. People who kill other people for, polit for political reasons or for ethnic reasons or for religious reasons. Or people who refuse to do any work but are always looking to exploit the law to take as much as they can from innocent citizens. Okay. I, I so it's not about the individual, it's about what they do. Okay. So what did you make of the whole Ambade losing the uh, APC primary? I know it's not your forte, it's not your party, it's not your business. But how, what do you make of the whole thing where Ambade wasn't, Governor Ambade wasn't able to get a second term and then uh, the, 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 the entire party deserted him, and Song Wolu gets it. What, what do you make of the politics, the whole process, and the person that is Babajide Song Wolu? I think Ambode has said everything that needs to be said about that person. No, no, no. He, he hasn't said everything. Oh, he, he can never he, say he's a, everything about someone. Listen, he held a press conference. We all watched it. And he said certain things. It is for us to have discerning minds and to understand what was said. No, but the same Ambode has said that he's going to do everything to make sure the same person. He said so many bad things about gets elected. He says he's going to campaign vigorously for, for someone. And do you see him campaigning? 
you no know, campaigns haven't started Cam campaigns officially for governorship officially begin on december so probably he's not campaigning yet what do you know <laughs> that's my i don't know anything about <laughs> about these people <laughs> i'm sorry you know um aside from what has been put in the public space i know nothing about them and i i have no interest in them okay. you know um as far as I'm concerned, I just want my people to be free. I want Lagosians to be free. You know, I want us to start moving forward. I want us to move away from, from the from the rule of one man. You know, I, w I want us to move away from this type of squeeze economy that we have. I want us to move away from that. So I don't want to be distracted by whatever side, is yeah. going on. You know, with some people. Whatever it is, they're, whatever brickbats they're throwing at each other. You know, of course, if they bring it to the public space, we can't ignore it. You know, we'll, we'll consume it, <laughs> as it were, almost as entertainment. All right? But in terms of the, the business of governance, it's a very serious business. And these people have not taken it seriously for the last 19 years. Aside from, you know, focusing almost entirely on what they can get from the whole exercise. Okay. Um, which, which, which takes us to vision scale in terms of cleaning waste, uh, getting rid of waste in Lagos. And waste management is very critical in a city like Lagos where, where you have so many people living in, in, in a kind of limited uh, square kilometer because we have the sea and all of that and we have the borders of the other states. Now, there are allegations that Vishonscape belongs to one man and that they haven't quite managed waste properly. What do you make of the whole waste thing? And what do you intend to do differently in terms of fixing the waste challenge in Lagos? I'm a stickler for the rule of law. And uh, while I do not agree entirely with everything that's in the Constitution, the 1999 Constitution, it remains the law. It remains the supreme law in Nigeria, and we're all bound by it, including state governors and state houses of assembly. So when Bola Tinubu created Loma as governor, what he was doing was he was subverting the Constitution. Because the fourth schedule of the Constitution, section one of the fourth schedule of the Constitution, lists waste management as one of the responsibilities of local governments. So by creating LOMA, the Tinubu administration committed a constitutional infraction. Or, or maybe it's because local governments do not have the capacity, the then, resources to... to then the responsibility of the state government is to make sure that they do have it. Just like the federal government is responsible for trying to make the state governments viable, the state governments in turn should be making the local governments in their domain viable. So if they don't have it, then give it to them. That's how it's done around the world. You can't be screaming, we want true federalism, we want true federalism to the federal government, and then you are not giving true federalism to the local governments. It doesn't make sense. It's hypocrisy, writ large. So what we plan to do is to return waste management back to the local authorities. But we're going to be doing that with a lot of assistance to them. We're going to be giving them, we're, we're going to be helping them to build the capacity to actually manage the waste. So one of the things we're going to be doing in that regard is building waste recycling plants for each of the 20 federally recognized local governments in Lagos State. Okay? Of course, there are 57 LCDAs, uh, 37 LCDAs that were created by the Tinubu administration, which, re LGS. which remain in Kuwait. Okay? unfortunately but we're going to be working with them too but first of all we want to give the 20 LGAs a waste recycling plant of high capacity each 
and they will have the capacity to deal with sewage and with that what we plan to do is turn it into biogas and manure they'll have the capacity to recycle uh, kitchen waste that's organic waste but isn't that what vision said they're doing recycle waste have you seen their facilities? But, no, but that's one of their core. Companies. Have you seen any facilities that they actually built, yeah, apart from the ones that, that that are already owned by Lagos State, which they are taking over? There's one as you descend <coughs> the third main land bridge from the. That's from owned the by Lagos State. It was built by the Jack on the administration. But they recycle. They don't. They like that's that's what they say they are doing there. Have you seen it? Well, I see when I'm driving. I don't go. Have in. you seen them recycling there? Because what I see is waste dumps at Ekbe, at Igondo, in Alimosho, at Olusosu, near Alausa. That's what I see, landfill sites. I don't see any recycling going on in those places. I just see huge tips of rubbish damaging the environment and damaging the health of Lagosians, whilst at the same time polluting the soil. That's what I see. Okay, I don't know where you get this theory from that somebody is recycling something. They're not doing anything. No, no, because that's what they told us. Have you seen the dump site at Ekme? I have. You have? Yeah. So what do you suppose is going on there? The dump site. Really? <laughs> There's no recycling going on there? <laughs> I'm the one interviewing you here. <laughs> <laughs> not the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen the dump site at Alimosho? <laughs> Have you I've seen, seen the dog? The Ajota one. You've seen the one at Ajota? Yeah. I think it's been closed now. <laughs> it was burnt. <laughs> so, so how do you intend to... You were, you were, uh, yes. I apologize for taking you off your train of thought. So we're going to be giving the local the governments... Place. We're going to be giving the local governments the capacity to recycle all the waste. We're, we're, we're going with the Swedish model, where... Not only do they recycle all their waste, they actually buy waste in from their neighboring, from their neighbors, from the neighboring countries, Denmark, Norway. They also apply uh, waste to garbage to Sweden for recycling. Okay, so we're going to be recycling paper, we're going to be recycling plastics, we're going to be recycling metal, we're going to be recycling glass and organic waste. Okay. Every local government will have the capacity to do that. Uh, by the time we've been in government for three years, all right, uh, we're going to be building up the capacity of the local governments to function as an arm of government, as you know, as a level of government. And you're not going to impose local government chairman? No, we're not going to do that. We're in a democracy, and we need to allow the uh, tenets of democracy to take root properly. Assuming you get elected and you walk into a Lausa on your first day and um, hypothetically speaking now, all the members of, in the House of Assembly are APC members. How are you going to work with that? You know, that's an interesting question, but you have to go back to history. A couple of decades ago, Sir Michael Agbola de Otadola was elected as governor of Lagos State on the platform of the NRC in a very unlikely scenario. The Lagos State House of Assembly, as it then was, was made up of a vast majority of SDP assemblymen with only four NRC members of the House of Assembly. In the event because the governor's ideals and the ideals of the members of the House of Assembly tallied with regard to wanting the best for Lagos State and for Lagosians, they got along just fine. They got along extremely well. So I don't foresee that there's going to be uh, an APC majority in the House. I suspect that uh, a lot of political parties are going to be taking seats in Lagos. I, I see uh, my party taking some seats. I see the PDP taking some seats. I see Accord taking some seats, particularly in Mushi. Okay. Um, 
it's going to be an interesting race. It's going to be an interesting race. Um, it will be a mix in the House, in the Lagos State House of Assembly. And with me as governor, um, I, I, I think that we'll have, we'll have one of the most dynamic governments we've had um, in Africa for a long time. Okay, so um, just to round off now, your, your strongest point or your forte uh, seems to be estate management. I mean, that's your background. Um, Lagos has a housing deficit of millions. I don't know what the exact figure is now, but there are a lot of homeless people. You're driving around Lagos, people are under bridges. People live in shanties, people live in shacks. Housing is not affordable. Landlords are increasing rents every day. How do you intend to fix the housing problem in a city, in a dynamic city like Lagos? Well, you know, it's interesting you should ask that question because that's one of the things that we, that's one of the cardinal points of our manifesto, housing. Um, what we're going to be doing is copy what has been done in the past, but improve on it. The Jack on the administration built 20,000 affordable housing units in four years. We plan to build 40,000 affordable housing units in four years. So we'll be trying to deliver an average of 10,000 housing units uh, per year, year on year, until, the, until year four. So we'll have 40,000 affordable units scattered all over Lagos State, the same way that the Jack on the administration did it. We're not reinventing the wheel here. Um, fortunately for us, construction technology has gone uh, ahead in leaps and bounds so that you know uh, what the Jack on the administration could achieve in those days we can achieve even more at a, a, a much uh, cheaper rate than what Jack on the was able to do um, we, we, we will also be encouraging the councils the local governments to get into real estate development as well to provide affordable housing uh, and we, we, we want to encourage them to do that on a rental basis, similar to what you call council flats in London. Okay, um, really robust um, housing, but nothing too, you know, nothing too expensive, nothing too, uh, how do you say, nothing too glossy. You know, just basic housing, decent. Uh, I don't expect that people will be expecting POP ceilings and granite floors and that type of stuff. But will it be affordable though? That's the whole point of not, you know, overdressing it. It will be affordable. And we will provide mortgages through the Lagos Building Investment Corporation, which we will fund. I mean, we have access to taxpayers' funds. I'm hoping to be able to put in about 25 billion every year, year on year, into the LBIC uh, to serve as you know, a mortgage fund for all Lagosians, starting with civil servants and public servants. And, uh, and then we'll extend it to the organized private sector uh, and then to the business community, okay? And then to everybody else. Um, that provision, we're, we're going to be setting aside about 25% of every uh, housing estate that the government builds for what we call key workers. And key workers are security men, so police, NSCDC, and in some cases the armed forces. Um, educational staff, so teachers, support staff and the like. Medical staff doctors, nurses, radiographers, you know, anybody working in, in the medical set, in the medical system of Lagos State. And then emergency response staff. So firemen, uh, uh, medics, um, emergency response people, you know, the Lagos Recovery Unit people, you know. So all these categories of staff will get priority for housing. That's the first step. And then everybody else will also be able to access uh, our housing provision all over the state. Uh, of course, we're going to be building more roads. 
okay, to make the housing projects make sense. Uh, each of the housing projects is going to be fully serviced, electricity, water, uh, central sewage, the whole works. Okay. Um, like you rightly observed, I'm a real estate developer. I'm an urban development expert. That's what I do. Okay. Um, so we, we, we have a fair idea of exactly what we need to do and exactly how to do it. Okay. Um, we have some Ulu, uh, some way eco. We had eco, eco Nibaje. We had the uh, Desiwaje eco. What's your own slogan for fixing Lagos? Beyond ordinary governance. You're not going Yoruba. Yeah. Beyond ordinary governance. Okay. We need to go above just shifting files up and down. You know, we need, to, we need to rise above that. We need to be innovative. We need to compete on the world stage. We need to compete for talent. We need to compete for inward investment. And the only way we're going to be able to do this is if we think out of the box and we act out of the box. Thank you very much. It's been it's been nice chatting with you, Mr. It's been a real pleasure, Jude. Well, I've really enjoyed myself. <laughs> Thank yeah, you very like, much. Like we do here at Pulse, we, we talk to all the candidates who would decide, I mean, who want to govern you. And um, we are going to bring other governorship uh, candidates to this same hot seat in the couple, next couple of weeks, or in the next couple of days, to outline their own plans as well. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.